Hello once again, this is Christopher Newfeld of Newfeld Legal, and this is my continuing YouTube video series pertaining to business development and incorporation. In this particular YouTube video, we will be looking at some of the mistakes associated with a unanimous shareholders agreement. The first mistake associated with a unanimous shareholders agreement is not even having one. A unanimous shareholders agreement is a very important tool in ensuring that your work and money, time, and investment in a corporation is properly protected and that you move forward with your other shareholders. As such, not having one can be extremely problematic, especially when disputes arise, because even though there are laws in statute that are designed to protect shareholders, having to go through the judicial process and the court system is never an advantageous process when there is alternative methods of seeking recourse and addressing your disputes. A second mistake associated with unanimous shareholders agreements is using an inappropriate template. Yes, the process is costly, but simply deferring to a template that isn't specific to your individual business needs, your individual shareholder needs, the particular dynamics of the individuals involved in the business and how they interrelate with one another is of itself extremely problematic and can be a major source of challenges for yourself moving forward with your particular business. A third mistake is agreeing blindly to the one shareholders agreement that is presented to you by your business partner. Simply taking what they provide you with when you are going to be committing such an amount of time and or money to this particular enterprise is not an appropriate course of action. You really need to be looking at what you're signing off on and making sure that it is fair and equitable and properly protects your interests, not only those of the other shareholders. A fourth mistake is not reading and properly considering the implications contained in the unanimous shareholders agreement as presented to yourself. You really need to understand what's in there and actually, if you feel appropriate, make changes to it. That is why you really need to have knowledgeable legal counsel working with you. In all these things, knowledgeable legal counsel who is experienced in unanimous shareholders agreements will do you a world of good and hopefully keep you from making the mistakes that cause all too many lawsuits from arising and business disputes spiraling out of control and ultimately decimating the business that people have worked so hard for and put so much money into. A fifth mistake is using a shareholders agreement that is based on a two shareholder structure when there are in fact three or more shareholders. All too many template shareholders agreements are structured on the basis that there are but two shareholders. However, when there are more than two shareholders, you have different arrangements that need to be considered. There might not well be a 50-50 arrangement. Instead, you might have three shareholders or four shareholders, each with an equal share allocation. How do you deal with those kind of situations? Similarly, how do you deal with situations where there is one majority shareholder and multiple minority shareholders? The shareholders agreement must be tailored and crafted to suit the dynamics based in part on the number of shareholders and their relevant shareholders. A sixth mistake found in unanimous shareholders agreement is having a buyout arrangements that do not work. The reasons that they might not work is that they might call for a purchase price 
that one is incapable of paying, either as a shareholder or by the company, where there simply is not the liquidity necessary to make the payment. This can be due in part to the fact that there is an unrealistic share valuation mechanism, or simply by the fact that the business is still early in its operational life, it has considerable value, but it is at the point where it's illiquid and unless it is sold, it cannot realize the capital demands required on it to pay out a shareholder that is leaving or a shareholder that has passed away or is disabled so that they're required to depart. And it might not necessarily be the easiest at any particular time to get bank financing to facilitate the buyout or payout of that particular shareholder or that shareholder's estate. A seventh mistake found in unanimous shareholders agreements is not being able to break a deadlock. When you have situations where the business is at a crossroads, you want to be able to find a way to go forward. And this doesn't necessarily mean that one shareholder has to buy out the other shareholder to move forward, but you really need to have a mechanism to f facilitate an end to the buyout. Otherwise, why are you putting all this work into the shareholders agreement when you have the opportunity at this particular time to create a structure and direction to keep the business moving forward on principles that have been agreed to at the outset Another mistake is not having a responsibilities matrix. Identifying what the particular tasks are of each of the shareholders within the business, what their expectations are, and how they resolve situations. Finally, another common mistake is not understanding the value and purpose of a shareholders agreement. One of the greatest values associated with a shareholders agreement is that it is a means to affect negotiation and settlement before the parties need to go to it. The mere fact that the parties understand that there is a shareholders agreement that can be used to put the other party into a situation that is not necessarily favorable to them, whether by way of a buyout, pushing through a deal, forcing them out, is often sufficient to bring that party to the table and to negotiate in good faith because they do not want to have to go back to the shareholder agreement. This is a very strong incentive that many people simply do not realize. Every situation is unique and you might not necessarily want to be relying upon the shareholders agreement, at least the technical worry that's contained within the document. However, the fact that it is there and that the other party can be motivated to negotiate because it is there is an invaluable tool and needs to be properly remembered. We hope that these mistakes that we've identified in relation to unanimous shareholders agreement have been informative and help you look towards putting together the appropriate unanimous shareholders agreement for your own business. We hope you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube video channel as it is through those subscriptions that we are able to strengthen our prominence and provide more and added videos to inform our viewers like yourself and also with respect to comments that we might attempt to respond to those comments and provide further insights that would not only benefit yourself but other business owners like yourselves. 
Thanks. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you again.